We have breaking news today, and I want Paul Bencourt to deliver that news to you. So keep up the fight in redistricting. We're on the right side. We've got to persevere. It's a one talk show host following another. Um, now, with the flip side of the news, uh, I think everybody knows that the redistricting hearings in San Antonio did not go well, okay, at this point. Now, uh, I want to tell you they didn't go well. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't go well at all. Okay. Now, Akiko was nice when he said that he would have defended it a little more aggressively. The reality is, is that uh, we're left in a situation where the Senate, uh, the Senate plans and the State Board of Education plans have been passed and they've been pretty clear. Uh, however, the congressional plans uh, and the House plan are in substantial trouble. Now, let me try to take the House plan first. Uh, and uh, let's visit. Uh, sorry, a state house and federal house. Both the federal house and the state house plans are in substantial trouble. Now, specifically, uh, because of some maneuvering, and I think uh, uh, I think Steve has covered it fairly well about getting the party off the suit. Uh, that basically left the state as the sole person that was defending the plans that were passed by the legislature. The state's last witness effectively exploded on the, on the stand, and Eric and I were calling Steve within about two hours of each other, because we had both heard the, uh, the problem. And basically, that was a professor from Rice University uh, who basically probably did more for the opposition's case than any of the opposition witnesses to that point. Now, it's a serious consequence of what's happening, because my guess is that a this is probably going to be potentially certainly a 2-1 vote, probably a 3-0 vote against the plan that, as it exists uh, because the, uh, the court you know, is clearly leaning uh, strongly in that direction uh, and, uh, and has, you know, uh, has effectively done so at this point by basically now opening up uh, 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 participants in the suit to issue or, or to give the court new plans on how to draw these lines. Now the problem is the only people who are going to be giving new plans are the Democrats and the Democrat affiliated groups besides the, the state which will be able to come up with a compromise plan. The bottom line is, I just want to make sure you understand, you must expect potentially a complete rewrite of all the congressional districts. Okay? That's, that's, how, that's how far afield this could be. Now, on the, on the state house, that is not, it's not quite that bad. But basically, uh, Eric and I looked at this uh, from different perspectives. The, one of the big targets is going to be Harris County. They're going to increase Harris County by one state representative. That's because of, of looking at the averages that you've got. You can easily make that claim from the Democrat side that's probably going to be sustained by the court. And when that happens, that means some other place. The rumor was originally Williamson County. It could be anywhere in Central Texas on a shared county routine. will be pulled out, and that will be dropped into Harris County. And that's to depair uh, Mr. B uh, Representative Bo and Representative Hockberg. Um, for those in Harris County know that that's not a positive thing, but that's highly likely to happen. Also, the Pena seat is probably in trouble. So you're looking at lots of uh, some changes, let's say, south of the line from Williamson to uh, Houston as a possibility. Now, the reason why I want to bring this to you is that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be disappointed with the results. Okay? Now, we don't know what these lines are going to look like. Uh, the, I'm sure there's, there's a, a, a work afoot to produce a compromise plan, but remember, uh, the, there's also divisions in the Democratic Party about how these plans are, should be implemented, and of course uh, there will be a, a basically a draconian plan produced probably by different Democratic groups to really try to gut redistricting as strongly as they can. So when you look at this, uh, understand that uh, basically uh, we did not have a good day in the court. Uh, there are no other ways to intervene because there are no other vehicles, other people on the side of the state because those were all cleared out at the request of the AG's office. So there's no way for other people to jump in at this point and offer other plans. So uh, we're going to have to wait for uh, what these plans look like, uh, but the court has requested it uh, and 
Uh, I think they have until October the 17th, Eric, if I'm going from memory. Okay. Uh, and basically, those plans, none of those plans will be as good as the plan that's on the table. So this vote means that, yeah, I, you know, I mean, it's possible that the compromise plan that the, the, the state could come back with uh, could be accepted, and that would be close to this plan. But certainly, none of the plainest plans are going to be anywhere close to the one that's passed. So bottom line is, you can see there will be substantial changes in congressional lines. We don't know where, don't know when, and don't know how yet. Uh, the House plan in the State House is easier to predict because we know in Harris County, for example, most of Southeast Harris County or Southwest Harris County will be redistricted when you look at these plans. Uh, so that's the bad news. And you need to know because not just Jason and I are going to get a lot of questions about this on air. Um, there are some very good minds trying to help the state right now come up with a compromise plan, which I hope works. But bottom line is that we did not do well in those hearings, and there's almost no one handicapping a, a win for the state you know, in, in the court at this point. Dennis? Yeah, uh, two things. Uh, one, that this, this compromise plan, or whatever the court comes in, and this October 17th, they plan to be totally done before and in the following deadline so that we would run under those new lines and file under those new lines. Okay. Two, would, would there is any chance for appeal that this would be appealed and go through, you know, once this vote is taken and if we lose it, is there an appeal process that goes through it? Okay, two questions. One, the first one is what about the timelines? The court's already sig signaled by saying, um, I guess the best way to describe it is they're uh, basically telling the voter registrars that, uh, that while they can go ahead and continue their work, um, they're effectively telegraphing there's a change coming. Uh, there was a media report that the, uh, the registrars and the people that are drawing the lines were told to stop. That's not true. But clearly there are changes coming at this point. And they're, and they're telegraphing that because they're trying to keep the deadlines intact. Okay, the court's clearly saying, I'm going to try to keep the deadlines intact so people can file. Uh, but they basically put everybody on notice that the change is coming. And there's no question about that. In the last redistricting, we ended up just keeping the same districts. Is there a chance that that would happen in this case? Okay, on the Texas House side, the majority of the districts, I think, will stay the same. There are areas like Southwest Harris County, the pain you see, and others we know are going to change. Now, you mean, yeah. Yeah, what change? You by, mean, by change, it means that there's going to be 25 seats in Harris County instead of 24. The 25th seat is going to be Democratic, not Republican. Um, so we know that <laughs> those seats are going to be modified. There's varying estimates of, of losses of this that could be from four to eight seats. It all depends on what happens. But you're talking about modifying from the redistricting plan that was set in place? Right. For redistricting plan in case, there's, there's a probable loss of a half a dozen seats. That's a guess. That's my guess. Okay? All right. Did y'all catch, catch what you said, Diane? There's a possibility that they will create a new district in Harris County for the Democrats. There's 24 now. That has to come from somewhere. Right. So you always have at least the possibility of ripple effects that you don't. Make Basically, every time you lose one seat, it's worth two. Okay. Right. Because the only way to create a Democrat seat is to lose a Republican seat. That's there is no other choice. Right. James. What's the possibility of Democrat? You have an idea, Eric? Less less than the Harris County map. The only objection to Harris County is. 117 by the DFA, and that's a retrogression issue because the Spanish surname voter registration dropped. I don't know whether the court's going to agree or not. Yeah. Um, I mean, on marginal calls like that, I think we're much more likely to get favorable votes. Uh, but, but again, on the main congressional plan, that is basically, it, I, you know, a rewrite may be too strong, but there's going to be substantial changes in lines. Okay. That's the bad news for the day. Val, Val, are you? Who appointed the three judges? Who? Okay, uh, the three judges, uh, Smith is so far back in time, I can't remember. Who? Right. 
Right. And I think, Valerie, you're really talking about who. This is George Bush or before appointees. Okay. Um, and in fact, remember, Mr. Rodriguez was on the ballot once and didn't make it. Okay. To uh, uh, you know, to be, I'm going to say he was uh, replaced by uh, Mr. Smith on a statewide ballot. Okay. So that's part, you know, you, you can have all sorts of reasons why this is happening, but the bottom line is that uh, we're looking at a probable 2 1 vote on the main issues against the plan, maybe even as high as 3 0, uh, because there was just some structural problems with the way that plan was done on the congressional side. That plan was very short fused. There's a lot of issues for it that go back, quite frankly, all the way to the fact that the congressional delegation was on one side of the governor's race and everybody else was on the other. And there's been, because of that, there was a lot of communication problems between the groups. And, and, but, but that's all history. That, that's everybody's speculation. It's history. It's done. It's water and bread. Okay. Yes, sir. I disagree with you. Okay. That, I, okay. I, and, I, and, I, and, and Eric, I'll pull it back to there's reasons where everybody has rude issues with the fact that that plane was so fast. Let's just leave it at that. Will you be here for a little bit? Sure. Okay. He'll be here to answer some questions in the back. Uh, I do have one question that I want to ask everyone to hear about. This is from those who just simply need to know. Are we considering Hispanic surveys? Are we considering isolated Hispanic surveys? There's a list of approximately 800 Hispanic surnames that they use that are not um, No, I, they were, they, I, I mean, they used to use that list. I believe they were hyphenated. Um, and it's basically they run those lists against. Uh, Register voters, et cetera. There's a published list that you can get from the feds. That's where they do all these comparisons from. Okay. 